you must gain control of your money or lack of it shall forever control you. No, we did not say that, but we wish we came up with such words of wisdom. They are Dave Ramsey's words, but it doesn't make the statement any less true. Knowing the things you can do to maximize your savings every month can go a long way towards your financial independence. Below are some amazing ways you can make use of to help you save money each month. Don't skip the video so you don't miss out on our number one tip that is life-changing. Hey everybody, welcome to Frugal Facts. Today we're going to go over the 10 ways on how to save money each month. Make sure to watch until number one because it's one of the most amazing saving tips I've ever seen. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so we can help you with saving tips regularly. Now let's get straight into the video. Number 10. Pay yourself first. The first rule of thumb every month after your check reflects in your checking account is to pay yourself. And we don't mean exchanging money from one hand to the other. We are talking more like saving a percentage of your money. Let's say your take-home pay is $6,000. You can follow Senator Elizabeth Warren's 50-30-20 rule. This means spending 50% on your essentials such as rent and utilities, 30% on wants such as internet services, and 20% on your savings. In this hypothetical case, you'd save $1,200. Automating your savings can get rid of the saving after habit. This is where you connect your checking account with your bank account such that when the money hits the checking account, 20% or whatever percentage you've allocated is automatically transferred to the savings account. You can never go wrong with this. After all, even as you're budgeting for the rest of the income, you can't use it because you can't see it, right? Like the wise said, out of sight, out of mind. Number nine, high yield savings slash compound interest. A high yield savings account is a type of account that gives you higher interest than a traditional savings account. Even though the APY is calculated yearly, interest is based on monthly compounding. For example, if you have a traditional savings account, it is not uncommon to see the interest of 0.1% APY. If you have saved $10,000, your interest would be $10 per year, which loosely translate to 0.0083% interest per month. With high yield accounts, you can get better interest than the regular savings account. For example, Ally Bank offers a 0.5% APY in their high yield accounts. So for $10,000 savings, you earn $50 a year, which when calculated based on the monthly compound is 0.416% interest. This is where, again, the power of automation works in your favor. Because you don't manually deal with a deposit, you don't feel tempted to skip it. This gives you a bigger advantage compared to someone who has to manually transfer their money because we bet that the money never reaches the intended account. Number eight, utilities. Oftentimes, we don't bother to find out how our ignorance affects our finances. For example, what do you do when you're done watching your TV? Do you spend five minutes shutting everything down? In 2019, the average electricity bill per household was $115 per month, totaling $1,380 per year. To avoid this, consider switching off the electronic gadgets you're not using at night, such as television, playstations, PCs, etc. You'll notice a change in your monthly bill. If you machine wash your clothes, do it in the dead of the night because that's when the electricity rates are down. You can also put a clothesline on your balcony to allow them to dry naturally, which saves you money and retains fabric quality. If you see neighbors whispering to each other, just hang a big banner that says, mind your own business. That ought to stop their wagging tongues. The same case applies to water. Sometimes faucets still have drops trickling out even after you've tightened them. Since your water meter is still running, that bill of wasted water comes to you. Also, turning on the tap too much when cleaning dishes causes water to gush out with force, which goes to waste. In 2019, an average family of four spent $70.39 a month on water bills. When you turn on the shower and leave it running to adjust the temperature, it wastes two and a half gallons per minute. To curb this wastage, adopt the three-minute army shower. You'll save water and time. Number seven, food. An average American household spends $3,154 a year eating out. That's about $263 per month. On top of that, you spend another $1,000 per month on groceries. While eating out every once in a while is okay, making four fast food purchases in a week can waste your money. For example, if you buy coffee every day on your way to work, you spend an average of $5. That is $35 a week. You can reduce eating out more and embrace home cooking. It allows you to maintain the cleanliness standards you want, eat healthy, nutritious food in portions you want, and saves you money. More than eating out, you can also save money by reducing the cost of your grocery shopping. Some ways you can achieve that are using coupons and other discounts. Don't shy off from using coupons while grocery shopping. Sure, you may have to dumpster dive to find coupons, but hey, anything to save a buck, right? Taking advantage of foods on sale. For example, when a product nears its expiry date, 
the store lowers the price to encourage shoppers to buy. Often, the expiry date between the one on sale and the one that's not is usually two days. You save $3 to $4 on every purchase. Shopping on the bottom shelves are the highest ones. Products at eye level usually cost more. If you want to save money while grocery shopping, just look up or down and you'll find a cheaper product of the same brand you like. Buy generic. We're so invested in brands that the product quality escapes us. The only difference is the label. Avoid paying $4 to $5 extra on popular brands and save your money. Buy in bulk. This is a no-brainer. If you buy in bulk, you save money. When you look at the cost per unit, bulk is cheaper than buying small quantities. You may have to part with more money up front, but you'll have saved more later. Number 6. Credit card debt There's a Hebrew proverb that says, Borrowing is the mother of trouble. A jeweler and watchmaker, the late James Lendl Basford, also quoted that a man in debt is a man in chains. He was right. If you have debt, you don't enjoy your money because every time you get a paycheck, most of it goes towards paying your debts. Credit card debt is the worst kind of debt to have. Besides the high interest rates, you're charged late fees in case you fall back on your payment. Credit card debt most times doesn't start in a big, pressing purchase such as medical bills or other emergencies. It starts with you wanting to purchase an item but you don't have enough cash with you. For example, you're strolling the mall and you come across this nice pair of shoes you like. The pair goes for $300 but you have $70 cash. You debate whether to buy them or be on your merry way, but the allure of the new item soon pulls you inside the store. 20 minutes later, you have a new pair of shoes and a $300 credit card debt. As your debt piles up, so does your interest. But since the flexibility of minimum payments is offered, you pay a little amount of money. The downside is, the little you pay, the higher the interest you pay. To stay away from credit card debt, carry hard cash. It is harder to overspend when you're using cash, but sometimes, if you have more cash than you need, you may be tempted to overspend. That is why you should carry enough for what you want to purchase. This way, you can't be tempted to spend. Number 5. Delay your purchases We know that sometimes you get bombarded with emails about insane discounts and promo codes. The world of online shopping has made life easier for people, such that you can buy a whole store in the comfort of your house and goods are delivered right at your doorstep. But as much as it has made it easier to shop, it has also made it easier to spend more money. All you have to do is enter your card details and everything else is done securely online. But there is an effective way to curb unnecessary spending. Abandoning the cart. That's right. Here's how. Say you find a nice shirt with a matching pair of pants at a discounted price of $135. You want to buy it, but had not planned for it. Put the items in the shopping cart, but stop just shy of checking out. Exit that webpage and get away from the laptop. Sleep on it for a couple of days. Chances are, you didn't need it as much as you thought you did. You could also practice the 30-day rule of thumb. This is where you abandon your cart for 30 days. If you still need it, go for it. Otherwise, that is money you've saved for the month. Number 4. Cut out unnecessary subscriptions. We understand that you don't want to miss the latest episode of Ginny and Georgia, but in all truth, how much time do you spend watching TV? To paint a picture, the Netflix premium package goes for $17.99. Chances are, you've never watched 25% of the content. If you have to pay, you can choose the basic plan that costs $8.99. It saves you money each month. Besides streaming services, your internet services and phone plan may be costing you more than you need. What plan are you on right now? Drop a comment and let us know how that's working for you. You can switch to basic plans and save your money. You'd still enjoy most of the features those with a premium plan do, but at a cheaper price. You can get a $30 unlimited plan with Mint Mobile, and if you pay for 3 months up front, you get it at $20 a month. Choose a plan that can save you money monthly while performing the duties you want it to. Number 3. Transportation Owning a vehicle no doubt comes with some perks such as not riding the bus or subway to work in the rain or snow. You can just take your car and load big purchases without having to pay for it. If you have a big family, there is no hassle when going to visit your relatives. You just bundle them into the car and you all have a nice road trip. But the price of gas, car maintenance, insurance, and repair can deter you from wanting one. For example, according to US News, the cheapest car insurance is $875 a year at USAA. An average American uses 656 gallons of gas a year for $2.94 per gallon, totaling $1,928.64. Factoring in all other expenses, it is possible to spend close to $5,000 a year. We're not saying you donate your car to charity, though that would be a noble thing to do. But you can use public transportation for your everyday commute and use the personal car when you need it. Public service transport has discounts too that you can take advantage of, such as a metro card that you can swipe up to six times a day. Besides that, you can also use a bike to get to work and it won't cost you a dime if you keep it in good condition. Maintenance is cheap and it'll take you to the same destination a car would, 
only you wouldn't have to feed the meter. You only need a strong lock for it. Hey, you can consider walking too. It is one of the best forms of exercise and it saves you money. Number two, branded clothing. You don't need Nike, Champion, Gucci, and all these big brands to look good. You can look awesome in a $4 pair of jeans from a thrift store. Big brand names sell their merchandise for 10 times more than generic brands. And while many influencers invest in that, they're probably sponsored by the brand companies to market their products. For example, a Fendi shearling coat costs a whopping $7,200, while you can find an equally warm and comfortable shearling coat at Walmart for $300. You can save a lot in a month when you go for non-branded but fashionable clothes. If you love designer clothes and are willing to spend huge amounts of money on them, go for it. But before you do, consider checking out fashion items that are not brand names. You might be surprised to find that you like them better than the branded ones anyways. Like Gianni Versace said, don't make fashion own you, but you decide what you are, what you want to express by the way you dress and the way you live. Number one, creating a budget. This is deemed as a cliche tip, but what can you achieve without a budget? Not having a budget may cause you to overspend. For example, you may go to the store and buy items you already have in your pantry, such as rice, flour, etc., just because you didn't have a budget. While it is true that you can never have too much food, buying what you need allows you to save money and time. A budget helps you know what you need to buy, which cuts back on impulse spending. Budgeting also helps you keep track of your expenses, which allows you to live within your means. We know it is boring and time-consuming, but when you're smiling on your way to the bank to put your monthly savings in, just remember, creating a budget helped you achieve it. Make sure to like this video and leave a comment in the section below about your money saving tips. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos of saving tips and much more. Check out this playlist of my top 10 videos of saving money tips and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.